Welcome to the Trading with Venus podcast, where we help you establish strong trading habits, generate consistent profits, and create the lifestyle you desire for yourself and your family. Now your host, Raman Gill. Welcome to another episode of the Trading with Venus podcast. This is your host, Raman. Just a quick disclaimer here before we get started. This is for educational purposes only and is um, not intended to be investment advisor, not an, in, an investment advisor. So um, if you need help with your individual investment needs, please speak to your investment advisor. And, uh, and trading is a risky business, so always uh, please keep that in mind and only put the money in that, you, uh, that you're okay losing. Yesterday I was talking about euro and pound so this is what i find um okay if i'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept of market makers market makers are essentially large institutions so when we get our ecn feed so when we when we go to choose a broker you must have heard everybody say um, you want the ECN feed, don't get the broker feed, so you don't want your broker trading against you. You want the ECN feed. What is ECN feed? ECN feed is essentially collection of orders. So this is the aggregate of orders that come from market makers. So it's not the broker taking the position on the opposite side of you. It's whatever feed they are getting from market makers. And this is why the feed will be the same for all the brokers, right? If the ECN feed, it will be the ECN feed. Sometimes they may work with one market broker versus the other market broker, or um, they may not have a particular market market maker. Sorry, but it's it's usually pretty much the collection uh, or aggregate of that feed that we are getting. And then what happens is they get the feed. The broker will match our order to whatever is coming from the feed. So the feed people on the who are providing the feed, those are called the market makers. And their function is to essentially create liquidity in the market. Um, ECN. So if you go, if you go, take a look at any broker. So let's take a look. Um, I'm using Think Market. So again, I'm not an affiliate with any brokers or anything. I don't have any ties to them. So Think Markets. Think. It, Think Markets is the account that I'm using for the uh, Trading Pro Turning Pro Challenge. So if you look at my account, a lot of times it will say Think Market on top. That's the broker I'm using. And if you look at the feed um, that they should provide, <laughs> they should provide um, ECN feed. Anyways, I, I don't see here. So, uh, but ECN feed, if you do, uh, do a Google search on it. So ECN, so a lot of times ECN uh, feed, so you can go take a look at it, this little article here. You can go take a look at it. What is ECN? So it's uh, basically this is this is the big thing, right? So it's not your broker taking uh, taking a position against you. This is the fee that's coming in. It's anonymous. When your order is executed, they don't know where it's going. It's just it's just aggregate of all the fee that they're getting. So it provides a lot of liquidity. So main thing here with the market makers that their job well their job is to make money. But in trying to do make money, they also provide liquidity um, to everybody else, right? To the smaller traders, to the smaller institutional traders and retail traders, all of them. So that's what they do. Um, that's called the market makers, right? So you'll see uh, there's a lot of um, conspiracy theory kind of stuff around market makers as well. Um, I am okay with that. I do subscribe to some of it. I'm not a big, you know, like basically when I'm looking at market makers, I don't care. What I care about is they provide us, um, they provide us liquidity, right? They have certain characteristics. So we don't have to be mad at the market makers or anything. They are the market makers. This is how they trade. And we just need to understand how market makers operate so that we can then operate within that uh, sort of that that's our universe right that's how that's the playing field that we are in so if you understand just like uh, the house always wins market makers always win the game is rigged for market makers and it's not so much the brokers the brokers do their own thing uh, they have their own kind of ways of getting us 
but it's the when we look at ECN feeds, it's the market makers that are providing those feeds. Market makers have the control over the market. They are the ones who can um, put large orders in. They can take positions, and a lot of times they will take positions in both directions because they will have one position going one way, another position going another way, and then they will close out those positions as they need to, or they will adjust these positions as they need to. So this is this is the whole market maker concept. We can, you know, uh, so the, so basically for our intents and purposes, they are the liquidity providers, and we need them. There would be no markets without our no forex market without the market maker. So we can't just hate on them. So, uh, so that's what uh, we'll do, uh, or that's what we use the market makers for. So in terms of stops and things like that, uh, brokers will see our stops and sometimes they do, they do things like that. They will open the, the spreads and go take us out, right? That's brokers doing that. Um, because whether you, 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 you use MT4 or whether you use um, any other kind of trading software, their proprietary trading software, they know where your stops are. Like they know where our tr stops are, right? They know how much margin we are using. They know how close we are to a margin call. And they will do that kind of underhanded stuff where they will they will take a look at everybody who's over leveraged and close to the margin, open the spread and take everybody out, right? All the trades closed, book their profit, off they go. Now those are brokers, right? They're gonna do that kind of stuff. There's no, we, we can't do anything about it. There's more and more regulations that they're trying to put into place, but it doesn't really change much. So that's why I, I don't like trade trading the news because basically we know what they do. So why put ourselves in the path of getting hit by that, right? That's the big thing. We, we don't need to be in that path, in their path of becoming a uh, mortality, so it's better not to. And trust me, I've been there many times. I, I've been the the fatality that they, you know, or I have become a fatality in their, uh, in their market manipulation. Uh, so it's not a good idea to do it. Um, that's why I just stay away from those type of situations, try to minimize it. Sometimes we do stupid stuff, but you know, as traders, our goal is to minimize the amount of stupid stuff that we do. Emotions will always come into play, uh, but our goal is to minimize those. Okay, going back to client liquidity, or sorry, liquidity access, market, will provide, market makers will provide us liquidity, right? However, they will do certain things that because they have, like they own the, the casino, they own the market, they have the advantage. They have deep pockets and they don't run out of money, but they do need money to manipulate the market. So it's not like they can manipulate the market unconditionally. They do need, um, you know, they need to manage their funds and manage, manage their positions. A lot of times they'll have position going in both directions. So, and they will basically go in and out of those positions to book profits. So they are making money as well. And um, really all they're saying is, hey, this is what we're gonna do. Are you interested in playing? And like the casinos, if we choose to play, it's better to play um, where we have some advantage. If we're gonna do the slot machines, we have zero advantage, might as well just give them the money. Then you're just being in, you know, you're, you're going in there to have some, some fun. And that's okay if that's what we were trying to do. But if you're really seriously wanting to win in the market, one strategy is important, right? So we don't want to just give them the money. Okay, so now um, I will go back to our fractional disparity. What is fractional disparity? So fractional disparity doesn't really have to just do so much with the market makers, but fractional disparity is how the currencies will move against each other. Um, so in terms of, so for example, we have euro dollar and pound dollar. Right? Generally, they tend to move in the same direction because they're highly correlated. They're both European currencies. They both have similar market forces that operate on them, right? So something happens in the Eurozone, it will generally tend to spread to the entire Eurozone and they kind of tend to move in a similar direction. Um, and commodity currencies, they have similar characteristics as well. So US, sorry, Canadian dollar, New Zealand dollar, Australian dollar, they tend to have similar characteristics in the sense that they're all controlled by the, or they're all impacted by the commodity prices. So oil, 
gas, um, metals, um, gold, copper, those type of things. New Zealand also has dairy. So because all these three countries are, are natural high, they have, they're rich in natural resources, the commodities or commodities, I should say, uh, kind of the same. But as, these, as that happens, as those prices go up and down, these currencies will be impacted um, similarly. So if you see Aussie dollar, so this is what happened to Aussie dollar today, went up and then came down, went up, New Zealand dollar came down, right? So they tend to hear Aussie dollar moved up, New Zealand dollar moved up. And if you look at Canadian dollar, moved in the opposite direction because it's Canada is back here, US dollar is in the front. So they tend to move in the opposite direction, but the move is essentially mirrored across the three uh, currencies. Now, we could trade them against the US dollar or we can trade them against each other. So fractional disparity is when you're trying to trade them against each other. I don't tend to do that too much. I don't trade Aussie versus New Zealand or Aussie CAD, New Zealand CAD. Um, I don't have the, the feel for those currencies because there are such minor differences that we are working with. Same thing with euro and pound. So euro pound, this one, you'll rarely see me take a trade in this one because it doesn't move as much, right? So Aussie, New Zealand, Aussie CAD, New Zealand CAD, these currencies don't move as much because the main currencies move tend to move a lot more because there's more liquidity in those. There's more people who are taking, doing transactions in those currencies. So euro dollar, pound dollar tend to move more. Euro yen, pound yen tend to move more. Aussie yen, CAD yen, New Zealand yen tend to move more instead of Aussie, New Zealand, Aussie CAD, that type of stuff. But sometimes what you will see is that they're not aligned. For example, so if you look at it right now, so we had a drop, price pulls back, nice pin bar, likely it's gonna drop a little bit here. Pound dropped, same type of scenario here in pound as we can see in euro, price went up, price came down, pulled back, drop. Same thing here, price went up, price came down, pulled back, drop, right? And now price has pulled back and now it's dropping in pound. And if we go on to euro, we just saw that, price pulled back up and now it's dropping, chances are it's gonna move down back towards this level. Don't know exactly how far it's gonna go because now the moves kind of, it's a watered down type of situation now. So as we can see, but they they tend to move in the similar direction, right? They're both moving the same direction. So that's why sometimes when it's a major news that comes out, um, let's say pound news comes out, we'll see euro move as well, or pound yen moves, euro yen moves at the same time. So that's why, so because they're so highly correlated, they tend to move in the same direction. But sometimes what you will notice is that one is moving, the other one is not. And when we see those circumstances where let's say euro dollar is moving, but pound dollar is not moving, then what we can do is go take a look at euro pound, see what euro pound is doing. And what you will notice it, it is that euro pound will be moving in one direction or the other. So if you see like over here, for example, we have a double bottom in euro pound and euro pound is going up. That means euro dollar is becoming stronger. So in that case, there are two things that can happen. One, if euro is becoming stronger, it may be that, um, that pound is dropping, right? So that's why euro is becoming stronger because the euro may not be moving at all, or it may be moving up a little bit. So euro may be going up. So let's take a look at what day this is, April 27th. Let's go back to April 27th. Here we are. So this is our April 27th. No, right over here, right over here. So this is our April 27th. So we have um, our S1 level. Bullish candle close, double bottom, bullish candle close, uh, likely price will go up from here if we didn't see this. So here we are, and if we go to our Euro pound, here we are, April 27th, price comes and does a double bottom, nice bullish engulfing candle close, goes all the way up, right? So Euro is moving up, Euro pound is moving up. If we go take a look at Euro dollar for April 27th, 
some time. So here we are, April 27th. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure. So here we are, drop and then price bottomed out. What time is that? So 15.00. Okay, so here we have it. So pound is moving up as well, but it's not moving us up as much. And then it starts to kind of go sideways here. Whereas if we take a look at Euro, Euro has moved up for several hours here because we're looking at one hour chart. Euro has moved up for several hours. Pound moved up for a couple of hours, not really that much. So this is what will create that fractional disparity here. So Euro Pound will notice because Euro Pound starts to go up, this will start pushing up. So when you see that Pound is, when we look at a smaller time frame here, you will notice that Pound is just kind of going sideways, not really doing much, but then you see euros taking off to the upside. Sometimes what will happen is we expect, or I expect them to move in a similar direction. So yesterday we took yen, pound, euro yen, pound yen, right? Because I expected both of them to move in the same direction because they're correlated and like correlations can work great because both of the trades worked or they can work poorly because both of the trades would be losses if the Kind of went in the opposite direction because they're correlated but sometimes uh, when we see that one is moving one is dropping other one is going up take a look at euro pound because that's the fractional disparity because that's what will be moving and you will see these moves like that and when you see that euro pound starts to drop you will see euro is dropping more than the pound so this is how they create that fractional disparity so they hold the one and move the other and a lot of times so let's say you're buying euro pound so they're buying euro pound that will create a bullish bias in euro as well because if you're buying euro you're buying it against like it will it will push it up against all the other currencies right so so that's that's the fractional disparity concept i hope it makes sense so just know that any correlated pairs when they are not moving in the same direction Go take a look at the cross um, and then you will notice something very interesting is that that pair will be going one way or the other and the one you know the currency that's not moving is the one that they're not interested in moving they're interested in moving the other one so you will see these uh, go back and forth and sometimes what happens is um, it will take out your stop so let's say we were selling euro euro dollar and pound dollar it may go take up your take out your stop in pound dollar and then it will drop hope you enjoyed this show for show notes for this episode please visit tradingwithvenus.com episodes page that's it for today and i'll see you next time if you want consistency in your trading, we invite you to join our daily market analysis calls where we provide the levels to find the best entries and targets on an intraday basis. For a one-week free trial, please visit www.tradingwithvenus.com. Thanks for joining us today. With much gratitude, your show host, Raman Gill.